Wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed morning tea. And so it's on to the second hour of the workshop this morning. I'd like to introduce you to Gilbert. Gilbert, if you could come forward. From Hunter Furniture, and he's going to talk to us about their use of EXO and new challenges and successes. He's got the copper, I believe, and I think we've got it working. Look at that. That's my armed and dangerous. Over to you. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, thanks, Bruce, and thanks for the invite to talk for a few brief minutes about uh, our company and particularly um, the, the journey we've had with Exonet and Focus and this man here, Alex, uh, for much of that over the last 10 years. It's a very brief history of our company. I guess many of you who live in Canterbury will know of Hunter Furniture. You may have seen television ads of Lionel Hunter back in the 80s and 90s um, advertising direct to the public. Uh, furniture. So he started his business 30 years ago. He, he was a um, upholsterer from high school who uh, made good by working incredibly hard and, and built a, a business with uh, quite a large South Island presence. And as I say, many, many Cantabrians who I bump into are uh, familiar with, with Lionel and um, with his, um, his company. In 2005, Hunter Furniture had four branches in Christchurch, in Dunedin, in Bicargo, and Nelson. And um, we're going to have a very quick look at uh, how things were back then, um, which we uh, call the World West. <laughs> Sorry, Clint Space is covered by the little microphone there. As uh, so some of the operational practices we had, well, everything was run on um, something called carbon triplicate boots where sales staff would take your details to the customer, they would make up some price off the top of their head, <laughs> probably make up the name of the product as well, scribble it down in their books. Uh, they would fax off their own purchase orders to suppliers. This is sounding wonderful so far, I'm sure. Uh, sales staff would calculate their own commissions. Uh, I believe they always rounded up instead of rounding down. Um, uh, there was no live stock visibility across the company uh, because everything was run on a very uh, antiquated system and largely paper-based. Financial reporting was very cumbersome. It was inaccurate. It was not timely. Uh, month end, I think, took several quarters to finish. Um, so that was how the business was in 2005. Uh, my predecessor, the previous CFO, uh, came on board in 2005 and implemented Exonet uh, company-wide. Some of the basic changes that were made at that point in time, uh, sales were now uh, generated through EXO pause, EXO point of sale, rather than uh, famous carbon traffic books. Uh, we had centralized stock, we had visibility of what stock was on hand in our different shops and in our distribution centers. We had system generated commission reports so that we actually paid commission of what had happened and not what the salesperson wished had happened. Um, and we had the start of a centralized admin function, so our head office in Christchurch was able to grab control of the operation of the business, um, at least to a certain extent at that point. Uh, we started a centralized oops, customer care team, um, and we also had, the, I guess, the rudimentary reporting through clarity reporting in XNN. Um, ODBC reports by Excel, which Alex demonstrated for us um, earlier. It was a pretty good start from, from where the company had been. Clint is now lying dead in a grassy knoll over there. It's not the World West anymore. We've grabbed some control of our business. So fast forward 11 years now for us as a company. We've now got 16 branches throughout New Zealand, which again is covered by that annoying little thing that we're trying to move. Thank you. That uh, was probably mind off and we covered up, do we? <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, 16 branches throughout New Zealand. We've got nine of the Hunter Furniture uh, brand stores and seven Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery stores as well. We were from Auckland at the top there to Invercargo at the bottom. And generally speaking, we were four times the revenue transactions and stock movements um, in this financial year compared to three or four years ago. So again, we've taken a, a, a leap from being a paper-based company that didn't know what was happening to a company running an Xnet and becoming much more professional and modern. And now we've had this big, uh, I guess, next step to being a national retailer 
increasing a scale or size and all the inherent problems that come along with that. So we had a couple of big questions for our management team. How can we do smarter business at shop floor level? So how can we do a smarter business for our sales staff who have to go through the sales process? How can we make things easier for our customers who come in and buy from us? We're obviously keen to make the shopping experience pleasant, um, to provide the best information, the correct pricing, to make sure that all the stock we have shows is available so customers can buy it. How can we offer customers the opportunity to transact with us on their terms? So uh, that leads into some of the developments we've done in the e-commerce side. I think um, it's interesting today with the BI being spoken about and Craig's presenting later on. I think BI is one of the, uh, I guess, big topics in business at the moment. Probably the other one is uh, e-commerce, web sales, and for retailers like ourselves and many other, this big... Uh, dilemma about how much of the future will be web-based internet sales compared to bricks and mortar traditional retail and there's, a, there's probably um, some of that transfers to wholesalers as well. How, how do we leverage off uh, the internet which just is so much a part of our, our lives today. So we, those were our big questions that we've been trying to answer and we're going to have a little look at how um, in partnership with Focus we've, we've used um, some new technology um, and, and leverage off some of the existing technology to make that happen. So this is our current uh, what I call our IT environment, I guess. So we'll get, let's try the laser pointer, shall I? Uh, we'll get uh, Exo Business, which has been in place for 10 years um, in the company. We'll get the engine that drives Exo, which is our, our SQL server. Uh, so our server environment is currently hosted in our head office. And, you know, in the future, we'll have to make some decisions about whether we go uh, fully cloud-based. Um, I'll, I'll talk you through uh, some of the new things we've added to the business world, trying to be answering those questions. How can we be more efficient? How can we look after our customers better? Um, if I start here with this little box here, sales tab, so our managing director wanted us to have a much more enjoyable sales experience. He didn't want our sales staff to be desk bound, to have to come back to a kiosk with XMS to type in a sales order. He wanted something mobile, a sales solution that our staff could use on our shop floors. So Sales Tab um, is a product that was developed for uh, sales reps. Um, it's a company in Christchurch called Zebo. Um, in partnership with them, uh, and primarily with Alex um, from Focus. We worked for a year on developing this app to give us a, an iPad-based web app that we can use on our shop floors. So our sales staff now are wandering around the shop floors. We've disabled all the games on the iPads. <laughs> that's okay. um, and they have their sales tool in their hand, their mobile. If you come in, Bruce, and you want to buy this $25,000 loud suite, <laughs> Discount, discounted to $24,000, 500 to you, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> you come and sit on it, we'll bring you the different samples of leather or fabric you can buy it in, and, and at the same time we can transact with you. We have all the live stock information, you can complete the sale on a tablet, you can sign the sales order, and it's all done seamlessly while you're sitting on the furniture. So when does the financial transaction so the invoicing, the actual invoicing GL transaction still happens on Excel, the okay. Excel business. The sales, the raising of the sales order and the committing of the stock um, all happens at that front end on sales tab. The big thing here, and I guess you know that's probably not relevant for, for a lot of you here today and for the businesses you represent, but the big thing is because of Exanet and the SQL back end, you have the ability to integrate lots of different software and tools that can run off that SQL Server engine and be integrated back into the So in terms of efficiently just create a sales order at the end of the... Absolutely. <laughs> so, of the cap session? Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, if you do a sale on the sales tab app, it will send off all the data to that web app which comes back into our SQL Server, creates the sales order as we would know at Nexonet populates all the deal, it's immediately committed all the stock that's on that sales order, it's created the entire transaction that's then ready, setting to the invoice to be processed, more just to be raised off it. So it's been a real game changer for us um, 
we went live with this about a year and a half ago. Um, generally speaking, it's run really smoothly, which is amazing when you implement new stuff. Um, big credit to Alex, who's been the, the brains behind making it um, work inside of our system and our processes, um, but also integrate fully with the sales tab app all the way through to XMNX. We very recently, uh, like two weeks ago, launched uh, a new e-commerce site, uh, leveraging off all the development we've done with uh, the sales tab app, um, basically giving a customer facing version of that on our new website. Um, we're in the mid to high level furniture uh, retail game, so we don't see um, our web sales being a massive part of our future in terms of percentages, maybe 5 to 10 percent of our future volumes may be online. But it gives our customers, our customers at risk, a chance to sit at home, go through a catalog, see our current promotional pricing, and if you so choose, you can complete that transaction online. You can also come into our shop, sit in our lounge suite, love it, don't like sales pitches, like I don't run in my office, see salespeople, and you can go home and choose at your leisure, and your comfort of your own home whether you want to proceed with that. So again, that transaction can happen on the website. All that data is flown back through the SQL server and you're having the sales order, the stock commitment, the purchase orders released back in X and X. Launched two weeks ago, I think we've got five or six sales, which has been great. We caught the flat because we hadn't actually figured out what we're going to do once the sale came through. <laughs> I'll be working on that this afternoon when we're finished here. Um, if there's any of you here, I'm sorry about the delay. <laughs> uh, unless it's you, Bruce, because you've tied up 15 minutes of my time. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I was at a conference, a retail conference last year in Detroit with uh, Lazy Boy USA where they uh, showed us all their bells and whistles, being an American publicly listed company worth, I don't know, many, many, many billion. Uh, they had all the bells and whistles in terms of the sales tools, the analytics. One of the things we decided when we came back from that conference was we needed as a retailer to start measuring food traffic. We spend millions every year in advertising. We obviously measure our sales performance, our sales staff, we need to start capturing uh, foot traffic in our doors and starting to understand what promotional activity drove traffic into our shops and then how that traffic converted to sales. So we found a company in the UK called Footfall who uh, provide cute little cameras that you can position above your doors that are reasonably easy to um, configure. Uh, our in-house IT manager has installed them in all our shops so we're now measuring foot traffic. Michael from Focus then um, did the little bit of magic in the background to suck that data from Footfall's um, uh, cloud data uh, and bring it into a view uh, in the SQL server so that we can now pull that through and integrate it with the reports. Mm -hmm. So our sales order report that we run from X and then now has our, our daily foot traffic showing up on it and our monthly foot traffic, which again is a great tool. <laughs> Certainly for our, our senior management to have a quick look each day, okay. And Ricardo sold nothing again. That's oh. <laughs> 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 probably a bit of an insensitive joke with uh, some of our uh, viewers from down south. I love it, Ricardo. It's our flagship store, did I mention that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we cross your people from advertising speed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're looking at. Uh, Food traffic, we're looking at web clicks from Google Analytics, we're looking at our advertising spend, we have the information from our media buyers about the uh, level of advertising, TV, radio, print. Right. We're trying to combine all that to some of the, the big data that we're going to be hearing, the easy ways to mm -hmm. interview later and Craig about how you can use that data in a meaningful way. Um, Take target. Uh, as we're growing and adding more and more branches, it's been much harder for us in a Christchurch head office to really know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Time Target is a wonderful tool if you want to know if your staff have actually turned up for work. So it's an electronic uh, uh, rostering uh, clocking in system. All our staff clock in with their um, index finger each morning, clock out for lunch breaks, clock out at night. That generates our timesheets for payroll. Again, uh, Michael from Focus has uh, helpfully converted that data from the 
type target database and he's sucking that information in so that we can now easily uh, view the number of shifts in each branch per day and then start looking at metrics like sales divided by number of staff rostered on, weekend sales compared to weekend staff compared to midweek sales compared to midweek staff and so on. It's helping us to um, identify inefficiencies in our business and try and refine. So have you seen a shift in your roster? You've adjusted from more weekly sales? Yeah, we have. Yep. Yeah. So, so now that we're measuring a lot better, we have. Uh, we've seen some shifts and then we've enforced some other shifts that haven't happened yet. And Ricardo does a great roster, though I have to say, just to recover from earlier. Um, and then the other big thing we've done, um, again, with uh, Alex being heavily involved in this, is uh, an EDI, uh, which stands a little initial stand for Electronic Data Interchange, which I had to Google. We've all been talking about EDI for years. We didn't have name. Um, our largest supplier, uh, wholesales into New Zealand, the they are the license holder in Australia and New Zealand for Lazy Boy. We sell a number of other branded products that we buy from them. Uh, we get around 60% of our product from them. Some of it's held in New Zealand, some of it's on ships on its way to New Zealand, some of it's coming from factories in China, Vietnam, Thailand. Uh, once we place our order, it's then on the factory. So we had uh, a huge amount of uh, email traffic and sales orders and purchase orders from XNet being emailed as PDFs to our suppliers, massive amounts of transactions from back and forward, occasionally once getting missed in the past we've had entire consolidated containers that we've emailed by my supplier not the ordered, which is alarming three weeks before you're expecting your furniture, maybe a 16 week lead time or the oh. to order it. So as you can imagine, terrible consequences in terms of um, my customers uh, and the goodwill of our business. This is now all happening electronically. So uh, our supplier runs a completely different system, but it's a SQL Server backend as we are. And we now have um, several magic things that Alex has managed to do. One of them is um, we can view all their stock in the warehouse, all their stock that's incoming on ships. We've mapped all our codes to all their stock codes using additional fields uh, in the stock items table so we can capture all the information of their incoming stock uh, and present a, a view to our sales staff and our customers of what's available. Um, but also at the same time, when we sell something on a Saturday or a Sunday, when there's no admin staff in our office and there's no admin staff in our supplier's office, in the past we kept our fingers crossed that we didn't sell 10 items when there was only two available. Now, as soon as that sale is processed, saved on the iPad, beams up magically to our SQL server, creates a sales order in XNet. We now have a purchase order created automatically. The stock is grabbed from our suppliers available stock. That's all happening um, automatically, electronically. We then just doesn't review. That, doesn't change the app or the stock that that well on hand. It does change the view. It does. It does. So it creates a hold in their system. Awesome. So it creates a, effectively a draft sales order at their end, which then commits that stock. And when our ad administration team get around to processing all the orders from the weekend, we will basically tick a field in the purchase order and then he sends the rest of the purchase order information and basically confirms that that's an order, provides an order number, and then it's, that's our product process done. A couple of big gains there. I mean, I mentioned the containers that didn't get ordered. We we no longer have the issue of human error forgetting to order something. Um, our customers have a more accurate idea of when they'll get product when they're in our shops. We can display the product that's available. Um, if if you think of the terrible consequences of not ordering something to your customers, a bad consequence for us retailers and for any who are who are wholesalers is having stock available and not being able to tell your customers available and using a sale who walks next door makes a terrible mistake of buying from Harvey Norman or something like that. Which you would never do that with, would you? Uh, because you were about to get a laser pen. Uh, so it saved a massive amount of administration time. It's much more accurate. Uh, it allows us at shop floor level to know exactly what stock is available at any one time. 
uh, and there's lots of other opportunities that we've not tapped into yet. Hopefully we'll get to the point of uh, automatically having the invoices created back into our system rather than being manually punched in keys. You remove the errors of typing the wrong price in or over typing a price or typing two instead of one in the quantity section of the purchase order. All the sorts of issues that we've had in the past. For our dear customer care team who have had to deal with a lot of change in this little chart, um, EasyView is something we now use as a, an Exasoft product uh, that I think Focus developed. You can nod or shake your head. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, EasyView surprisingly makes things easy to view. Who <laughs> <laughs> um, It gives a view, gives a customer care team a view in the EasyView screen of our orders, all our sales orders, all our purchase orders, shipping data from our supplier, so we can see uh, ship name, container number, ETA to port, estimated processing time to the warehouse, and gives us all that data. Uh, in a simple format for our customer care staff then to take a phone call from Bruce is really keen to get lunch so we can say I can see this on track for you due date of the 15th of July or Bruce if this is coming a week early we should be calling in two weeks time to organize delivery. So it's given us a good um, I guess a good portal to be able to view a lot of this data that's going on up here that in its raw data form is quite complicated and, and difficult to look at. I've walked on, I forgot to go to the next slide. So uh, some of the areas where focus and particularly Alex have helped uh, is in integrating our data with, with our suppliers, um, combining that information into a, a viewable format, an easy view. Uh, I touched on some of the stuff that Michael did and bringing in information from outside sources and be able to integrate that with our sales data. Um, we've also um, for many years used um, Excel and the ODBCs that Alex touched on earlier to pull through information and be able to manipulate that. So, for example, our stock manager would refresh his view of all our stock items, sales, incoming stock, and then he can chuck that into an Excel spreadsheet, play around with it, knowing you can't break it. It's just a, it's just a refreshing view from the database, but it does give us some, um, what we found is giving us some quite good uh, tools to be able to slice and dice and play with information, you know you can't break anything, whereas if you're doing it in the back end of the SQL Server, it's risky, and if you want it, clarity is obviously time, cost, and hassle in getting that developed. So Excel and ODBC is definitely a really useful tool for us. Um, we're playing around a little bit in the Power BI space as well, trying to automate some of that information that we can suck out. Um, obviously, we hear from Craig later, I'll have a look at the forecast. Focus, focus? Focus. Focus. No, no. Just go no. no. <laughs> um, Product as well, I think for us, if I, if I jump forward to the end too quickly, um, just working out how we can use all that information we're grabbing is, is, is the next big thing for us. It's great to have it all. It's kind of meaningful, but to be able to present it in a way that our shop floor managers, our managing director, our buyers, our operations manager can all use and uh, I guess identify the key things that will make us more successful. I touched on 400% more transactions, sadly not 400% more profit yet, so we need to get smarter and work out how we can um, uh, use the information on hand, present it in a meaningful way and start driving most of business decisions. How do we take risk? Good, yes. Okay, I'll flip back. You can go back if you like. So I just thought I'd sh show you a couple of cool things that I'm sure Focus would be really glad to uh, set up in your company if you wanted. Uh, a couple of years ago, our managing director loves uh, coming up with these crazy ideas. I mentioned said, I really want the sales report at the end of the day. Uh, he leaves about 3 o'clock every day to play golf for the rest of the state of the office to 6 or 7 at night. <laughs> this is available online, is it Bruce? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, job after the day. He wanted a sales report at the end of each day, showing him what's happened during the day. Uh, through that, Alex thinking that's probably not possible. So we now have a scheduled task each night, 10, 10 to 6, that runs the clarity report for our sales orders, runs it for today's date. I've taken a wee snip of it here where uh, our MD will get this report showing the number of sales, 
by a salesperson by branch or some other data that we've chosen to throw in there. Showing them the door counts for the day and for the month to date, um, average sales uh, over here that we're going to squeeze it in with our month to date and our budgets and our performance against last year. So that runs every night at 10 to 6 and gives our managing director what he wants. We've, we've had this report in XMF for many years, but the fact that we can actually get those reports automated and scheduled to send out is wonderful. So how does he consume this report? Is it something like dashboard form? Is it a printed report? It just, it just comes through as a PDF. So it's a clarity yeah, report, email. scheduled PDF to his email. Right. So we didn't think it was going to be very easy, but in actual fact, I think it was a couple of hours of work and uh, it's been a, a really great tool. We send it to all our managers as well, so they can, the next morning with the sales staff, just go through where their branch is sitting um, months to date. <coughs> Metrics. Um, so Michael um, from Focus uh, threw some stuff at him. We used to, at the end of each month, pull out all our sales information, door counts, sales per sales staff, margins per sales staff, number of rostered shifts. We then looked at add-on sales and who was adding on rugs and accessories to a line sweet sale, who was upselling warranty products, which is very important boost for that line suite, that's one of the investment. Um, all really important information for us to be able to look at and say, hey, price structure you're selling 75% warranty upsell and you always sell a rug with a line suite. Awesome. And we can see from that you 10% over budget. Dunedin, I won't use them the cargo this time, you're only selling 40% of your warranties, you're selling freight free, your GPs are down 2%, let's work out how we can improve that as benchmark of strong performing branches. Used to take hours and hours putting the data out. Michael, um, thankfully, managed to build a view uh, that could combine a lot of that information from different um, Excel tables. And we have that pulling into a pivot table that we can just refresh. So as Alex showed earlier, go to the refresh tab, refresh, you now have live updated data summarizing with the, the slicers that you can add. You can pull it out by each branch by day period and there you are. That's the information. Much more robust than in the past when we're manually typing stuff in and certainly if I was doing it, probably mistyping or missing formulas. It's been really helpful for us. The next step is to make it more automated and available by cell phones and laptops, and that's where you know an upgraded EI tool is going to be useful. But this is a brilliant starting point for us to know, yeah, we can have that information, we can have it automatically. Um, this is a little, it's a pretty long slide, sorry, but this is um, in our sales tab uh, tool. If you wanted to come in and buy a Dawn chair, this is some of the magic that's been able to have been done in the background. So you want the chair, Bruce, mm -hmm. and our SG fabric, you love that charcoal colour, it go really well with your boots. Yep. Um, <laughs> this, this date here, I promised myself I'd mention you. Know, this, one, like <laughs> this date here that our sales staff see pop up half a second later, the magic that's been on the background is incredible. So we have all our branches pointing to prepared stocking locations. Uh, all the information from our suppliers and from different tables inside our database working at lead times, what stock's available, what day of the week it is, what branch you're selling it from, and came up with a calculation of the best available lead time that pops out in a number. But uh, I think truly our sales staff would appreciate the magic that's been on the background. So now for all our stock items and we're selling to customers, there's all this amazing stuff being on the background to come up with a more accurate due date for our customers. Uh, it's been many, many hours of, of work and development time by Alex and, and uh, I guess creating all the background data and tables and also combining that with the supplier's information to, to produce a very simple number that means our customers get more accurate information. It's an example again that probably isn't directly relevant but it shows what's possible in a SQL Server environment. Just, just about anything, if you've, if you've got the will, if you know what the information is and you know what you want to achieve, you know, we, 10 years ago I wouldn't believe we could ever do this when we're still writing stuff on this paper, but it's, uh, it's been a massive help for us. And this is just a quick example of, um, if we drill into a particular stock item again, we're showing the availability here, this is pulling from our stock locations, uh, our warehouse, our supplier's warehouse, and then the 
9,000 that are available is a full lead time from a, a factory in Thailand, I think, for this product. With all these dates calculated again, dynamically calculated based on what day of the week it is and what shop you're shopping in. So I read this stuff weird. So this is our this is our sales tab app. Oh, okay. um, so this is the view that our sales staff and our customers see. Yes. But it's all the magic in the background that gets me a bit more excited and uh, people look at me blankly. <laughs> <laughs> Just what, kind of like what's happening now. <laughs> so what's the, the, the zero in index one, the zero in index nine? Or? Okay, so for our, oops, for our sales staff on button, um, they can select how many customers buying, so you push so let's say they wanted three and they didn't want them until August, you'd push one, two, three, and that's nine that are available and three of them would now be in that number that we're buying. Um, one other really cool thing for us on the sales floor is we calculate it with a, it's password protected that staff can go into and then enter a discount or be able to see the minimum level they can discount to as well, which again is leveraging off the information in the stock items table, which is controlled by data in, in Exanet. We'll be able to push it out and, and use it on the front end in the sales app. Quick view or easy view. So this is going back to the EDI with the main supplier. Oh look, it's the Dodge here again. So here we are, Bruce's chair is on order now, um, signed by Gilbert, but Bruce, Bruce is committed to buying it. Uh, and we've got our ETA date from our supplier, so that's the date it's going to arrive in port. We've got a container number, our ship name. We know it's actually happening, can't get forgotten or missed. We've got our order number, we've got supplier status, so we can view all our orders and see exactly where they are in our supplier's um, sort of supply chain um, and, and understand exactly where they are. Easy view makes it simple to look at. Um, I think that's just about enough for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing in our managing director's wish list, I'm going to throw it out there for anyone who's answers, is time travel and teleportation means no more late deliveries. Nobody's been able to deliver that yet. Greg, <laughs> you've got some stuff happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, but behind that, all the crazy ideas he's had so far we've been able to deliver. Um, the ones I've demonstrated today have been you know, leveraging off XNet, SQL Server, and, and the focus team. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Any questions? Uh, one of the interesting things I found in that story is how you actually get access to your upstream suppliers' information. Mm -hmm. Who here has got that sort of privilege? Wouldn't that be amazing to be able to see what your upstream suppliers got? Mm -hmm. That's a great relationship and a great, great outcome to your yeah. business. Mm -hmm. Helped by the fact that at our end we save 20 or 30 hours a week of administration time and accuracy and at the other end the same if not more for them. So mm. there's, there's cost benefit if you can demonstrate that it's going to make both of your lives easier and get them more sales as yes. a wholesaler. Um, it's a no brainer at that point. Right. Has that also access their price your pricing from these or is it just stuff available? Uh, I believe it does, yep. And if, if it doesn't certainly can do. I think we, we upload their pricing sort of in bulk and it only changes twice yearly in a way that you uh, and in terms of the sort of SQL Server environment, they limit what we can access. We're presenting only a couple of views that we can see from their system. I, I can't unfortunately pull out our suppliers, uh, sorry, our competitors' information find out in their bank <laughs> board. So it's all it's all carefully locked down to allow the transactions that we want and they want to allow us to have. But nice. it's a great partnership. Wonderful. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. All right. This takes us to the next presenter, which is Craig. All right.